for something as chill and laid back as cycling is supposed to be, it has an awful lot of rules and wrong ways to do things. In this video, I'm going to share with you guys five things that I actually honestly love that more serious cyclists hate. So let's get into it. The first thing is Crocs. Yes, I do actually seriously enjoy riding in Crocs when it's super hot or I'm doing a ride or a tour where there's gonna be lots of river crossings or fishing. And I mean that in an actual authentic real way, not just treating it like a meme. They're lightweight, they're super comfy, they're awesome camp shoes and actually not too bad to ride in. And yes, I've seen all the people that have tried to put cleats on Crocs but honestly, my response is like, why ruin a perfectly fine pair of Crocs? That totally makes them useless for taking into the river. So yeah, I like Crocs. Some people absolutely hate them. Some people think I'm crazy for even biking in them, but hey, they're not so bad. That's a perfect dovetail into the second thing that I love that serious cyclists hate, and that is flat pedals. With a good, wide, and supportive flat pedal, you can turn every shoe into a cycling shoe. If it's cold and snowy outside, just use your regular snow boots and bam, you're her winter cycling. If it's 100 degrees and you're gonna do a bunch of water crossings, ride with your croc. I like the limitless possibilities that you get with a flat pedal. You're not restricted to the overly narrow, overly stiff, you know, cycling specific shoes. Not to mention the few studies that have compared clipless to flats show that the gains of clipless pedals is marginal at best. And in some instances, flat pedals are actually more efficient. Even GCN found that in their own studies. If you're a weight weenie and you're bike touring, it'll make your kit that much lighter because you just have to carry one pair of shoes instead of your riding shoes and your off the bike shoes. The other thing I love, which serious cyclists hate, is floopy, flappy, gravel casual fly fishing shirts. They're not aero, but they're super comfortable. And when you're traveling and you want to blend in with the locals rather than sticking out like a sore thumb, they are the perfect bit of cycling wear. You can flip up the collar, get great sun protection on your neck. You can leave the sleeves down, protect your arm without having to slather on half a bottle of sunscreen every time you go out for a ride. Fly fishing shirts are awesome specifically because they're meant to be quick dry. They often have an action back so they don't impede uh, your arm movements on the bicycle. And they often have big functional pockets because they're meant to carry fly boxes so they'll fit things like your snacks, your phone, even small cameras. If it's super hot, you can cape them open by undoing the button and even roll up the sleeve so you have a short sleeve shirt. Super functional, but drives the serious cyclist absolutely crazy. The fourth thing I love, which drives serious cyclists crazy, is friction shifting. Derailers have a relatively simple task. They just have to move left to right and derail the chain from the chain ring and the cogs. And you can do that really easily with friction shifting. Index shifting just makes things so much more complicated. One little movement in the shifter has to equal an equivalent movement in the de rear derailleur. And it just becomes a big incompatible Rube Goldberg to make that happen. Whereas with a friction shifter, you can use the same shifter for 12 speed, 11 speed, all the way down to two speed. You can use the same shifter for both mountain bike flat bars as well as drop bars. You can mix and match road and mountain bike group sets. There are just so many advantages if you can get over the one click, one shift thing. Conventional thinking has been that nine speed is the perfect amount of gears for friction shifting. But I found that even with 11 to 12, it's actually better because you're always in a gear. So yeah, friction shifting. All my personal bikes except for uh, my mountain bike is all friction shifting. The fifth thing I love, which serious cyclists scoff at, is rim brakes and cable actuated disc brakes. To hear some people talk about hydraulic disc brakes, you'd think that every cyclist prior to the invention of hydraulic disc brakes died instantly on the downhill. While there's no denying that hydros feel great and are the perfect brake for certain applications, I think they are way overrated. To give you some perspective, uh, we rode across country with rim brakes. I believe they're cantilevers. And, and my bike had 150 pounds of gear, the 30 pound bike and 175 pound rider. And we rode from the West Coast all the way to the East Coast, up and over mountains without a hitch. In the middle of the trip, I actually burnt my hand at camp. I had to switch my brakes from how they're usually set up to moto style, just so I could actuate the stronger brake with my non-burnt hand. And I was able to do that cable switch at camp. No way you could do that with hydros. I've actually come to really appreciate rim brakes, especially after 
learning how to set up cantilevers. They do give awesome stopping power and great modulation. And cable discs, unless you're doing Red Bull Rampage, totally viable. In fact, the Grotex that I just reviewed on the PLA is among the strongest brakes I've ever tried, period, both cable and hydro. Not to mention if I wanted to use those brakes with drop bar levers, that's a pretty simple thing that any mechanic can do. So, so I'm still all in on cable discs as well as rim brakes, which is something that just boggles the minds of more serious cyclists. So did you hate one or more or all the things I have on my list here? Well, you should probably watch GCN. All jokes aside, I wanted to make this video just to demonstrate that you can play with your bike. Don't feel like it's your job or your task to be as efficient as possible at all times and not do quirky things. I give you permission to do quirky things on your bike. Forget all the noise and the judginess of the more serious cyclists. Let them do their own thing. You do you, do weird stuff, and as always, keep the supple side down.